Remember, you guys asked for this. Stop me if you've heard this before. This is IGN.com with the top 10 worst fatalities in Mortal Kombat history. Number 1. Liu Kang in Mortal Kombat 1. Look at this guy, he doesn't even kill the opponent. That blows balls, man. And I mean big juicy balls. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more evidence that IGN doesn't know a goddamn thing about Mortal Kombat. Yeah, it's a common belief held by people who are, well, you can't spell ignorant without IGN, if you know what I mean. But Liu Kang's finisher in the original Mortal Kombat is the best fatality in the series, and here's why. It conveys character. I know a lot of you newer fans who came in during the Netherrealm era will hear that and think, wait, MK fighters have character? And yes, well, they used to. While there are some finishes in MK1 that are cool showcases of the fighter's abilities, sometimes more so when censored, reducing someone to dust is way more impactful than making parts of them explode fight me, Liu Kang was the only one that told us anything about his actual personality. Liu Kang is a Shaolin monk. Killing is a big no-no for those guys. MK Shaolin monks even received heavy criticism for how violent the titular monks were portrayed to be. So, when Liu Kang showed up in MK1 and did a cartwheel uppercut, even without the screen darkening like in the other finishers, people still didn't get it and said it sucked. This may well have been where the asinine idea that Liu Kang is boring started. I mean, god forbid a hero not be a bloodthirsty monster. You'd think these people grew up in the Age of Injustice in the Snyderverse. To fully grasp this, you need to re-examine MK1 without the influence of later games. Remember, the Outworld stuff came later. The plot of MK1 before MK2 retconned it is that Shang Tsung has seized control of the MK tournament, an institution for the Shaolin, and corrupted it into a vile blood sport so he can seize the souls of defeated warriors to extend his own lifespan. Liu Kang is the chosen warrior of the Shaolin that stands in opposition to Song's corruption and must defeat the sorcerer with honour to reclaim the tournament for the Shaolin. If he were to kill an opponent, he'd be no better than Shang Tsung. That is the context in which this finisher was conceived, a game about a noble monk who must remain true to his beliefs and expunge Shang Tsung's corruption from the tournament. But just because there were no gnarly blood and guts, man, people thought it was lame, prompting the team at Midway to relent and make him a killer in MK2. It could be somewhat justified now that he's fighting to avenge the slaughtered monks, but that plot point may well have been implemented to justify his killing instead of the other way around. Still, I feel that the team were trying to be technical with it, like Zack Snyder claimed he did with Batman. One finisher is the same one, but with the darkened screen, and the other hasn't become a dragon to kill them, so it's not technically him. MK3 gave him that weird arcade cabinet finisher for similar reasons, but he also has the fire one, which is more explicit. Then they gave up and just had him kill with a level of bloodlust equal to the rest of the cast from MK4 onwards. But isn't it more interesting if he does have this code of ethics? I've discussed it in Wasted Potential before, but having the hero of a series about violent murder be someone who refuses to take a life, which comes back to bite him later, is way more interesting than making him yet another violent murderer. It would also make his undead corruptions more impactful, because then we see Liu Kang's power fully unleashed by a soulless husk or a villainous incarnation. This small detail that was intended to convey character and could have led to more impactful stuff down the line, instead was misunderstood, unfairly criticized criticised and undone, perhaps to the detriment of the series as a whole by suggesting that the fans weren't ready for any level of complexity and were just here for the spectacle, eventually bringing us to the most shallow and spectacle driven entry in the series thus far. And this has clearly had an influence on the fan base. Most of the pre-release discussion surrounding the 2021 MK movie has been around the fact that these movies finally have gore and fatalities, as if the original 1995 movie wasn't a great adaptation even without those things. And this reflects a shift in priorities between the Midway and Netherrealm eras. In the Midway games, finishers were goofy and silly, and you'd punch a guy's head off or make him explode into three skeletons worth of bones or turn into a polar bear. It was fun. Nowadays, it's just vile and mean-spirited. They go for such extreme levels of violence and graphic detail, and it's just childish. A few fatalities in MKX and Eleven showcase some level of personality, i.e. the cages and fucking no one else, but even that rings hollow because those two characters are not that violent or psychotic. Two games prior, Johnny Cage was horrified by the notion of having to kill people, and while he obviously eased up on that stance by the next game when he's become a soldier, that doesn't mean he enjoys the act of taking life and does morbid things with corpses, but that's as much character as we can convey in finishes these days. We get the quirkiness with none of the morality. Some characters kill and it makes sense, like soldiers and efficient assassins, but the team are more focused on extremely violent spectacle over portraying them as killing because they must and not because they enjoy it. Sonya Jackson Sub-Zero should be quick and efficient along the lines of a modern brutality, but the fighters here aren't characters, they are power sets that are thrown against one another like in Death Battle. 
Hell, even friendships, while offering a break from the incessant bloodshed, still don't convey real character because most of the cast act like children in them. Instead of calmly offering tea to the opponent, Sub-Zero makes ice cream and giggles like a schoolboy. <laughs> Speaking of contrived friendships... Why does this keep happening? Because I have laid my coffin with this game and there I shall be buried. So, gameplay and story integration! I've already said this once before, but I feel like there's a lot being expressed by Liu Kang's fatality that's more than just a cartwheel and uppercut. I agree with Snake's reading of Mortal Kombat 1 as a standalone story, and to expand on that idea, I think Mortal Kombat 1 utilizes its framing as a fighting game to effectively convey its narrative. Plenty of fighting games are framed as tournaments, but Mortal Kombat felt the most like an actual tournament because of one particular element the voice of the announcer. They are present for every fight, watching for their entertainment. It's that exact same voice that says, Finish him. The fight is already over. Your opponent is defeated and can no longer fight back. It's Shang Tsung that calls for you to kill your opponent. The choice of whether or not you choose to obey Shang Tsung here is inconsequential for most characters, except for Liu Kang, who will always refuse Shang Tsung's request no matter what, unless you have an unfortunate accident at the pit. Liu Kang's fatality carries narrative weight because when the voice yells, Finish him. it's Liu Kang who refuses. Let's imagine a version of Mortal Kombat that actually utilizes fatalities as a storytelling element. Imagine that the only way to fight Shang Tsung in arcade mode is to perform a fatality every single round, and by doing so, you empower Shang Tsung by literally feeding him the souls of the fighters you've killed, allowing him to take their forms and wield their special moves against you. Now let's think about Liu Kang. He performs a finisher on each opponent like Shang Tsung demands, but he never kills. By the time you reach Shang Tsung, Liu Kang has denied him all of the souls that would normally empower him, and now that Shang Tsung no longer has a repertoire of stolen powers to wield against you, Liu Kang's actions have more meaning to them, staying true to his Shaolin roots to the very end and closing out the story. But obviously this is not the story Mortal Kombat wanted to tell. Mortal Kombat wants to tell you that pacifism is lame and for pussies. It's no wonder that everyone says this fatality is lame because Mortal Kombat thinks so too. They keep bringing back this move, but this time it's more violent. Aw oh, yeah, look, he breaks their jaw now. Oh, he explodes them into gibbs. Liu Kang's not a pussy anymore, you guys. The move is cool now, right? Of course, I know who I'm talking to, and if people are just going to keep believing that fighting games can't integrate story into gameplay, then allow me to counterpoint that it's not the fault of the genre that the story suffers. It's Mortal Kombat's fault for sacrificing character and story just for more fatalities. We're supposed to believe that MK2's retcon changed Liu Kang after the Shaolin monks are slaughtered by the Outworld invasion, forsaking his code of ethics and taking on a path of blood to avenge his fallen Shaolin brothers. A shallow justification for why he does real fatalities now. But if you look at any canon portrayal of Liu Kang where he's not a mindless zombie or a mindless zombie, the games are rather consistent in portraying him as a pious, soft-spoken monk who fights to test his limits and cultivate growth and potential in himself and everyone around him, like a Shaolin monk. This portrayal is so consistent, in fact, that Liu Kang in MK11 remains calm despite discovering another massacre at the Shaolin Temple, the event that was supposed to break him in MK2. By all accounts, he's still the gentleman soft boy that he was in MK1, and I struggle to believe that he's now some maverick monk who doesn't play by the rules, because that character already exists, and his name is Kung Lao. Unlike Liu Kang, Kung Lao wears a lethal weapon on his head and does not hesitate to use it. He fights to bring prestige to his family name, often coming up with morbidly creative killing moves to assert his strength and skill. He's the bad boy renegade to complement Liu Kang's mild-mannered paragon, a dynamic that is completely lost if Liu Kang Kang is also going around killing people. So either Liu Kang's fatalities are disingenuous to his personality, or I'm supposed to believe that Liu Kang and Kung Lao are the exact same character. And Mortal Kombat is nothing if not redundant with its characters. Those are some good points. But I'm still miffed that you broke in here to present them. <sighs> and you buying that cheaper security system was... a bad idea. Oh man, I never get to say it. The evil is defeated. And non-lethally too. Liu Kang would be proud. Please. You embarrass me. Don't worry, you're not the only one, mate. I'll just see myself out. 
Hopefully we'll see a reorganisation of priorities in MK12 and actually get some real characterization that sticks and is allowed to be conveyed. Maybe if we brought back heroic brutality as a term for non-lethal finishers, people wouldn't be so shallow and dumb about a warrior monk refusing to kill. If you liked this video, why not subscribe and support me on Patreon like these fine people here? If not, then make sure to share it with your enemies so they can suffer along with you. Today's recommended video is Abitorial, How Fatalities Kill Mortal Kombat's Narrative by ABI at Sugar Punch because it's tangentially related. It's not because he gave me a shout out in that video, I don't know what you're talking about, 